everybody, I'm Ashley Graham, and this is Pretty Big Deal, where confidence is key. Every episode, I get to pick the brains of brilliant, inspiring, honest, new and old friends who are a pretty big deal. Today, we are talking to the hilarious Megan Trainer. Megan is a master songwriter and radio darling who also happens to be as sweet as pie. In this episode, we talk about music, body, marriage, and so much more. Megan hey. Trainer. We have Megan Trainer on Pretty Big I'm Deal. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, congratulations about genetics. Thank you. Yes, I dropped a song. I totally forgot it was coming out last night too. I was you did? yeah, because we we just approved like single artwork. I didn't have anything prepared, and I was like, guys, we really dropped the ball on this, huh? Like, I don't have much to post, so today I'm gonna try to brag about it. And no, but yeah. I kind of love that when when artists are like a little bit, you know, they, they don't really like go in and be like, here's my music, here's my music, here's my music. They shove it down your throat. You, yeah, you just put a story up, and it was like in so many hours. Like oh by yeah, midnight. yeah, I was like, I yo, my whole team worked on that caption. We we're like, what do we say? We're like, midnight, and then the DNA emoji. Isn't it insane what goes into a post? All of my posts. I know. People have no idea. It, it takes a city of us, <laughs> and I'm like, did I spell it right? Is this cool? And then we'll delete it, and we're all questioning ourselves. I know. It's stressful. Oh, so Your media. captions are always great. I will say that I just like to keep it, like, real. Yeah. And then when I want to explain something, then I go to, like, my girl, and I'm like, yeah. okay, did I explain it Do properly? I smart? Yeah, did yeah, I yeah. use the right commas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the worst. That's the everything. punctuation. So we just got to see each other at Fashion Week. Yeah, my first Fashion Week. Oh, my gosh. This was your first Ever. Fashion Week? Yeah. What? I'm girl, How is that possible? I just, I don't know, man. I don't, I didn't, I never did them. I always remember hearing about them and remembering like when I was in New York, I'm like, oh, traffic's crazy because fashion week. But I like, I didn't get to learn a lot about it and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't have opportunities. And this year I made a point with my stylist, Haley, to make sure I went in and met my favorite designers and and then luckily in those meetings, they invited me to their shows. And Christian was like the first meeting I Christian had. Siriano. Oh, Christian Siriano. I love Siriano. him. He's the best and like the best at my curves, man. Right? Like if you look at all my pictures from Fashion Week, I look bomb, but I can't stop getting over that picture of my his outfit on me. That's the crop, the black crop top. Yeah, it was like the crop top. I love a poofy shoulder. Mm -hmm. And like my midsection was showing, mm -hmm. which is like y'all. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you had like your little abs on top. Dude, my little pretend abs. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> um, but everyone like Jennifer Coolidge were coming the the coolest women of all time were coming up to me and they were like, Whoa, I can't pull that off. And I was like, but you can. Yeah. In Christian's clothes, you Hell know? Hell yeah. Oh no, that lineup, that front row was everything. Oh my god. I know. It was the coolest, yeah. That and was the best. He, and the party. He's, they're like, is Ashley coming? I was like, guys, she's pregnant. She'll not come. <laughs> and then, oh my and God. we were partying. I mean, I'm the worst. I'm like not really a party girl. Me either. And yeah. That was my first club in four years. Wow. Bro, I got married and was like, good night, everybody. It's That's what PM. happens. That's what happens. I don't want to go, but I actually had a lot of fun. <laughs> I just want to know like what, what is it? What from the beginning you were singing in church? Which, oh, yeah. Wow, hello. you did research. <laughs> but hello, church girl here, too. Oh. Yes. What kind of church did you grow up in? Uh, a Methodist one? A Methodist. Uh, you're like, it's kind of boring. I, I don't know. Boring. I've been going to Sunday service at Kanye West. Like, you have? Girl. Wait a second. I'm in the front row at Sunday service. Megan. And it's popping. I want to come. You can so come with me. Bad. Oh, Whenever can? you want. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, like, I know people. Like, my manager. Grew up with the Kardashians, so, like, that's my in. Totally, that's the only in I'm in. Like, that's it. But wait, my friend told me that it was one of the most— and he sings in church. He, he goes on tour, but he said it was one of the most emotional— Oh, yeah. —choirs, moments that he's had, and people were crying. And yeah, it was, yeah. You're really praising. And they're—well, it's like, no one's—I I just love it because I haven't gone to church since when I grew up in that church, and mm -hmm. church was like— not to offend anyone at my church, but, like, boring mm -hmm. and, like, kind of creepy and dark. And I was, like, tired. And my dad was, like, the only fun part because he was playing the organ. And he's, like, good morning, everyone. And <laughs> I would sing with him. And that was, like, the best. And now this church, like, or not church, it's a Sunday service. And they don't, like, shove anything down your face. They're, like, 
just appreciate life, appreciate what we have. They sing a song that's like, we have everything we need. And I just grab my family family, and we start crying and we're like, we have everything oh. we need. And it's, I wrote them a letter, um, Kanye's manager of like, I've never felt more welcomed. I've never felt happier. I've never felt like so spiritual and so happy with my family. Like this brings us together every week. And it makes my family closer, and it's, like, the coolest thing we've ever done. So I'll be in L.A. in a few weeks. Okay. And I'll call you. Come with me. <laughs> we got to do but it. But I want I to know I want to know what it was like going from singing in church to 2016, and you're winning the Grammy for Best New Artist. Like, what what happened there? Oh, I jumped. Yes. I, jumped. I was singing um, on the beach on Nantucket for, like, people who were eating dinner that were like, nah. Like, <laughs> and I had this one little fan named Bobby, and I— just did the Today Show, and he was there. He, like, showed up. Like, he's still my number one fan that comes to my shows. And he's like, so it's it's Have crazy you invited him backstage? Oh, yeah. We yeah. were chilling all morning. But it, <laughs> that's my Bobby. Uh, he's from Nantucket. He's great. But it's it's crazy that, like, yeah, it felt like one in one week I went from singing for a restaurant of people who weren't looking to an arena in Boston, like my arena, the Boston Garden for Jingle Ball. And I was in front of 20,000 people, which is more than the island that I came from. Like, that's more people than the island that I came from, the population. So it was all like, what? what's happening? Like, And we're still, my brother's with me, my mom's with me, we're still pinching ourselves like, how are we here? Like, this is the coolest thing ever that you you're interviewing me right now oh and that, like we're still like my mom's like i can't believe this is happening we're, it's it's great you were writing songs yeah you were writing music yeah and and what made you want to go from writing to hey i'm out here well this is me i i always Welcome. wanted to and i always felt the fire in me and i i my dad said never i don't know how he said it but it was like don't don't have to rely on people to make your dreams come true. Mm. So I started learning production and I was producing these albums in my room and like a little beast and no one's ever seen like a 16 year old girl doing that at the time. And so I would walk into sessions like as a freak. They were like, oh, uh oh, you're scary. And I'd be like, can you move over so I could finish the song? And, and, and this is when you were like 16, 17? Yeah, 16, 17. I was like officially signed by a country publicist. And I was country, yeah, random because well, I I did these songwriting conventions like, like uh, you submit your songs and then people judge you. Okay, and you hopefully get signed at one of these places. And my second year, I got signed. I was wow. like, I made it. I'm not going to college. <laughs> like that was my I win. And so they would send me to L. A. weeks at a time, and I would write with all these random strangers. And I kept writing and writing, and eventually I wrote all about that bass and. Nine months after writing that song, like, it was floating out and nobody cut it. No one could cut it because it's so specific. And then L.A. Reid heard it at Epic Records and was like, well, who's singing the song? Just go get her. And then they met me and I had, like, a backwards hat on. I was like, hello, Megan Trainer. I'm a little songwriter. I don't know. And I've just been holding on for dear life ever since. I'm all about yeah, that bass. I, about I, like, that bass. Like my, no trouble. <laughs> my audition for my record deal was me with a ukulele. Like, the night before, I was like, I only have a uke. I don't do tracks. I don't know. And they're like, that's fine. They and loved I it. When it was like, I'm a songwriter and played it on the ukulele. And they were like, yeah. Well, L.A. Reid. Everyone else was like, what is this? But L.A. got into <laughs> it. L.A. was like, shoo, up, up, shoo. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> he likes it. That's fine. Was this a dream? To yeah. This was a dream. And people warned me. They're like, heads up. He's going to bring in a lot of people in the audition room. And he didn't. He brought in like 12 people. And I said, is this it? And he goes, oh, you want a show? He's like, hold up. And then he brings in 40 people. And I was like, shut your mouth, Megan. What are you doing? <gasps> you're like, shut up, little girl. Shut up, you little girl. Like, <laughs> then I was like, gulp, here we go. And Did yeah. you did you write that song in in the expectation knowing that it was going to be this huge body, body positive change? Like, all I remember is when I wrote it with Kevin Kadish, who's like a— a dad. He's like, <laughs> like I just met this guy. It's like a blind date every time you write a set, like a song with, you're making magic with a stranger. Right. So I was like, nice to meet you. What's up? And I was like, we both grew up chubby. And I was like, okay, we can relate about that. Aww. And we were just laughing while writing the song. Like, no one's going to hear it. No one's going to be willing to cut it. And I was like, screw it. I'll sing it. And I went in there. 
and put on the sassy soulfulness that I grew up like loving. Which is also and Megan Trainer. But now is yeah, it's yes. like now it's everyone's like, oh Megan Trainer. Uh, which is crazy. But um yeah, I sang it. He put no autotune on it. It was very raw. We left like, you like it? I like it. Okay. And and that was that. That's amazing that you can just like walk into a studio, not know somebody, have a connection, and then boom. Forty five minutes later. I mean that's it. <laughs> this is this is what put you on the map. Yeah. Did you know that you were going to be this this kind of like this darling for America about body confidence. I mean, seriously, no, because no. I think there's so many young girls who looked up to you and said, "Oh, she's got a base," and well, we're not talking about the. Mm's, mm's. We're talking yeah. about you got drunk like in the trunk. I got it from my mama. Yes, yeah. I didn't even know that until I was like, photo, foot, like. People were taking pictures of me everywhere. I was like, well, damn. Like, you didn't know you had body yadi? I didn't know I had curve. Like, my waist goes in, thank the Lord. And it's like, <laughs> it's like shaped right. It's like all the right junk in all the right places. I was like, but it, no, I had no idea any of this was going to happen. I didn't know. When it first started blowing up, I got a lot of hate first. Right. Of like, the you got a lot of backlash. Line. What was that like? Scary. I was it like, is. Oh, no. I, I didn't, didn't mean it. I didn't want this. I want, I just, I wanted maybe. Like, I got 20,000 views on the video, mm -hmm. and I was like, that's cool. And if I get dropped, great. At least I did it, and I tried. And I was, like, pumped that I just signed a record deal. So when it blew up, I was like, uh-oh, hold on. Like, what's going to happen now? And then I've just been, like, literally running with it, like, holding on for dear life. Like, we're still here? Have you had trouble with your body ever, or has you have you always just been confident? I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Well, because wrote, you just said, like, you you know, you came out and you were like, oh, I didn't know I was so curvy. Yeah, I always grew up on the chubbier side. Like, my brothers and I, we all did. And then my older brother just shot up in sixth grade and became And now he's like a string perfect. bean. Perfect, yeah. And now <laughs> like, everyone's like, ooh, hot brother. Like, that's what I'm known for now sometimes my, <laughs> at the Christian show. They're like, who's the hot brother? Oh, yeah. you had him there? Oh, yeah. Dang, I missed him. Oh, yeah. You can DM him to me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I, I mean, I like, I like a hot man. Yeah, he cute, he cute. <laughs> but Justin I was understands. Wingman. Yeah, he'll get it. Yeah. No, I wrote that song like I wish I was hearing stuff like this on the radio, mm. and like I knew it would never. I thought it would never work because that people don't sing about that stuff. People are just hot, and mm. like pop stars are hot and beautiful. And I, I was like, well, I'll never look as good as Rihanna. You mm. know, I'll never. No matter how, I always told my dad like, don't worry, because. I'll be 26 and I'll be the biggest songwriter and then I'll figure out how to fix my body and lose weight and look like a pop star and then I'll do it. And so for the fact that L.A. Reid was like, you look perfect and you are perfect and this song is perfect, I was like, I am? And, and then like I started learning that years and years of singing this song to people and seeing their reactions and hearing their stories. I was like, me too. Like it That's was amazing. my therapy. I just got chills because to have somebody tell you that you're perfect when for so long we've had to fit into society, into the norm, and here you are, you're like, I am me. Has it been difficult for you having the backlash of the skinny girl comment? You know, and, and there's so many comments like this in music now because you just want to be yourself. But do you feel pressure now writing, thinking oh. about those comments? Or do you just say like, well, you know what, this is me and I am who I am? Yeah, I'm so sensitive, dude. I'm so soft. Uh, I, anytime like people freak out on Twitter, I crawl in a hole. And I used to not be on Twitter. Like I used to have my mom tweet for me or help me out. And and like recently, I've been going on it and like really engaging with my fans. Twitter gives me anxiety. And then I went into dark holes and was like, mm. how do people deal with this? How do people survive this? People are really strong, and I always put on this strong look of like, no one can hurt me, but I'll, oh my God, comments hurt. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think I am, I mean, even in interviews, I'm like, don't say anything, you know? Right. Like, it makes you just get a little bit more apart, cautious. Or, yeah, and especially songwriting, I'm like, I want to help everyone and I don't want to upset anyone. And that's like, if, if I'm reaching all these people, that's what I want in the first place, so... I'm thinking extra hard about it, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I understand that sentiment. Yeah. When I think about Photoshop, I think about 
you know, I mean, you know where I'm going with this, but I have been, I have been on the other side of a photo where they take out all my cellulite, they retouch my waist, they narrow my face, they, you know. What do you look at? What do you think? I think it's ridiculous. I hate it. And And you have no say. There are so many times where I've been on set and I'm like, hey, do you see that dimple? Do not take it out. Really? I say to the photographer. Because you know what? Like, we can't have these conversations of love who you are. And then our faces on a cover of a magazine. Exactly. So what happened with your music video, Me Too? So frustrating. Nobody believes Me Too. It sucks. So you didn't approve the video before it came out? I approved a video. It wasn't Um, that. I... I was on the road, so I was in buses, and I was, like, traveling, looking at this video, but I made sure, like, I screen, like, because the fans nowadays, they screenshot it. Everything. and they put So I go by literally every single clip, a three-minute video, just, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. And I have screenshots on my computer. I have my, my whole family watched it. I was even, like, concerned about my dress. Like, you could see my pin in the back or something, and I was like, let's zoom in on that and make sure that's good. When that video was online, the first five seconds, I was like, why are the fans photoshopping me? Because they were posting reshots of the video. I was like, why are they messing with my waist so hard? And then I looked at the video and I was like, oh God, oh God, it is my video. You could see it right away. Oh, instantly. And my family was like, that's a joke. Like that's harder than like Nicki Minaj's actual body. Like it wasn't human. What did you do? What was your first reaction? I screamed, I screamed. I was. I freaked out. I went, it was the first time and the last time I went right to social media. I went to Snapchat and was like, well, guys, guess my team messed it up. So I'm going to take it down. And my manager at the time, Troy Carter, ripped it down. Like he was like, this is impossible, but I'm going to do it. And he ripped it down for me. And when they fixed it and I was like, I put it back up and I'm in my hotel room doing glam, getting ready for like the Today Show. And on the news, like Good Morning America is like, New music video by Megan Trainer apparently photoshopped, and she's upset. And what I just Snapchatted is on the television, on but the news. Thank God you had Snapchatted. And I was like, right? I was like, okay, this is a good thing. I had people messaging me like, hey, don't do that. Don't speak out about it. You're going to hurt people's feelings, like the editors and the directors. The and, editor did it to you yeah, and without I, asking I found you. Out the editor was like in a different country, like in a different time zone. And, I, and they're like, it's going to take a day to fix it. And I was like, you guys suck. Like, <laughs> this whole experience sucks. At the end of this, after making all the phone calls you had to make and doing the Snapchat and all the press, how like, did, how did you— everyone to me? Like, I am the no Photoshop girl. Like, this is who we're going to do it to? How did you feel? I mean, like, how— Oh, so sad. Yeah. So embarrassed. Embarrass embarrassed is the best word. Mm. Just like, because— I tell, I told, I'm telling everyone, I approved this. My family approved this. And I, I would have seen that in five seconds. And it was the whole video. And I was just so mortified that I had to deal with it. But now here you are. You can talk about it. Yeah, now I'm like, I don't care if you believe me. That's what happened. Like, Well, he, you hear it now like, I believe, I believe you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I've do. been on that just, other side of it. Yeah. If you're listening. If you're listening. Megan Trainor's It wasn't a truth. stunt. <laughs> What I love is how transparent you are. Your social media is just, it's so fun. You you. tag Spanx. Oh, I love Spanx. (laughs) I'm wearing them right now. Yes. She's wearing Spanx just over her knee. She's got like this long, silky, are those pants or it's a skirt? It's a skirt. But she has like like, a Givenchy sweater on. The Empire State Building and it was windy. Oh. And think, I was like, I don't want to wear them. I'm I'm good. And then they're like, (laughs) you should wear these. And I had my Marilyn Monroe moment (gasps) 100 times. I was like, oh, so. So do they go up and, came in. do you pull them up under your bra? Yeah, I had that this morning. Yes. Do you do the <laughs> over the shoulder or Yeah, the strap. See, I, I hate the over the shoulder. Really? I tuck it under my bra. Okay, I was gonna say, but then I get like muffin top right here. I if just it doesn't go I, up. I embrace the muffin top. No, no, you don't you don't leave it here, you tuck it under. And your bra just in. holds it? Yes. Your bra holds it. But you have to have your stylist pull it from the back. Like here's the bra, okay, pull okay. the spanks. Okay. Okay. I'll show everybody and that's on like, my no, it stays. Are you dancing? Like, what? like No, I'm not dancing like I'm Megan sweaty. Trainor. I'm not you dancing. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. So there's no rules for dressing your body. Rules for dressing me. Actually, sure. What I are guess. they? I'm scared of jeans. <laughs> I are you? I hate jeans. That's so funny. Um, but I'll rock them if they're like the boyfriend or whatever they're called. Like the big, Oh, baggy. Baggy, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've rocked them like tight. But my problem is I can't. 
wear jeans and sit down. Like I, I know the it's like the the it the just roll. hurts me, my stomach. Like it hurts and it leaves a red line. And if I wear it like. I don't like this area. My, how, what rated are we? Uh, no, we are X rated. Oh, we are? Yeah. Okay, my vagina area. Yeah. I don't want the fupa. The fupa. I don't want details of yes. that showing. I understand. So if you see my outfits, I'm like, let this. We will flow. never see Megan Trainor's fupa. You will never see a camel toe on me ever. <laughs> ever. I, I, love won't it. Let, I won't let it happen. I won't. <gasps> Does Daryl like your fupa? <laughs> Loves. <laughs> He worships my body more than I thought any person could. Okay, when I was— It's aggressive. I, okay, what I love is that you said— By the way, everybody, Daryl's her husband. And Daryl's my so hubby. so freaking cute He's, together. like, here downstairs oh somewhere. God, he's so cute. He's the greatest. I have someone on my team that was like, oh, he's in an iconic— film <gasps> spy kids, kids. Yeah. <laughs> which i feel like i have to watch now because oh she called God. it iconic it, just watch the first one okay and because he's six years old like a baby oh and he's God. the cutest little thing oh my God. and i want to have a thousand babies with him oh well yeah. i can tell you that how is it it the first trimester sucks i'm in the second and i'm kind of into it uh, like you don't have to it. suck in yeah you don't you That's, know what i mean like when i like get really bloated or eat a lot and I'm like oh I wish this was like for a life you yeah. know like yep exactly I was just like it's okay I'm making a life right now you know but I want to talk about what you were saying cuz what I love that you said about Daryl was that he made you feel sexy oh, and this yeah. is one of the first times that you felt sexy and I know what that feels like when I was 20 years old I had a new boyfriend he was my first longtime boyfriend and he was like your body is like a wonderland yes and I did not know that a man would be that obsessed with my you know side butt cellulite like all back fat Oh, yeah. What did Daryl say? What did he do to you to make you just feel so comfortable with him? It's like it's like the little moments, like when I'm when I'm undressing to get in the shower or I'm putting clothes on and I look like meh, meh, meh. like I look crazy and I'm like slipping on a spank. He's like, God, I'm the luckiest man alive. Like he Aww. says these big liners that I'm like, really? Aww. And he yeah, it's. It's when I feel my ugliest, too. Like, it's been days without makeup, and I'm just, like, in pajamas nonstop for days. He's like, like, how did I get, I how did I marry the prettiest girl in the world? And I was like, he loves you're just for saying you. that. He's like, dude, and he'll give me examples. He's like, your eyes, your face, your skin, like, loves the tatas. Hello. Loves. I know, Justin's a boob man, too. Yeah. Oh, and they get really sensitive when you're pregnant. You kinda, really? Yeah, you don't want oh, Daryl on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I heard. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, so I'm just research. like, down, Justin. Get down! down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I want to know where did all of this transparency come from? Being real? Yeah, being um, real. So I don't I don't know how, how else to not. Really? I, I mean, they gave me media training one day at Epic Records when I was, like, first starting out. And she ripped me apart, dude. She's like, I can tell you're nervous, by the way. You're holding your knees and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, this is stupid. I don't want to do this ever again. And I didn't. And my team was like, you're, you're fine. You have a good personality. Just be yourself. And... So I just So it was that one moment that you thought, you know what? I'm not going to just choose to it not be like, me. Yeah, it was like posture. Every all of my answers were wrong. Like they were like I was writing your album and I was like, "Well, I saw a bunch of cows and outside in the morning and smelled a lot of cow poop." So, it was kind of stinky, but and they were like, "Don't say that." I was like, "What? That's what I saw." Like I peed behind the barn cuz I couldn't make it to the house like Got it. So you've just you're some just, real country like They natural. didn't like your honesty. They were like, "Ew." <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so I also want to talk about your surgery that you had and the oh, vocal yeah. surgery. Two of them. You had two of them? Bro, yeah. What, what, was, what happened? I failed. I don't know. I, <laughs> I worked so hard for the, like four years nonstop. I was on like mm. every single day doing mm. a show, doing this. And uh, I just, I'm not born, like my vocal cords were not born to do this gig, I think, because some people can smoke a whole blunt and then go on stage and have an hour-long show. Mm -hmm. I can barely get through, like, a 30-minute show. Mm. Like, it's a real struggle, and I have to really learn, like, okay, this is the part I sing, this is the part the crowd sings. Like, I have to, like, oh, study that and really learn where I can breathe. And, and I was on tour, and I just kept—my throat kept bleeding. 
And I wasn't drinking. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was getting the best sleep I could on a bus and bouncing from hotel to hotel. And I, I was like, I'm fine. I could keep going. And they were like, if you don't stop, you'll blow them out permanently. Like, you will do real damage. So I went. I had to cancel an entire tour, which is, like, disappointing everybody. Did that make you anxious? Oh, it was horrible. I had, like, bronchitis at the same time. I was on so many steroids. So you know how that feels, like, when you're sick nonstop, so they just pump you with steroids Ugh. and you're angry, fat, and have acne <sighs> riddling my face. I was like— this isn't real, right? Like, just writing in my journal, like, nah. -uh. Oh, my God. Yeah. Thank God for a journal. Thank God for my journal. I can't imagine going through something that's so, I mean, it's life-altering. It's so traumatic. It's, it's life-altering. Like, I don't know how to, ex I just explain it uh, or compare it to a dancer. Like, say your whole life is dancing. That's your career. That's how you survive. And then you break both legs. And you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, you're out. I was silent. I was silent for over four months. With, like, a new love of my life to Daryl. I had to teach him, like, some sign language. And I had to write in a phone and was like, mm. like, you can't go, mm. you can't laugh, you can't cough. Wow. Like, it's some type of torture. And then I got locked in my head for too long. And then I got crazy physical crippling anxiety that I didn't, like, really understand. I didn't really comprehend or I didn't know what people were talking about when they're like, oh, I get diarrhea and I, like, throw up and I... Like, all of a sudden, I was having these physical changes to my body. Like, I'd be on fire. And I was like, oh, I'm, I have, like, something really wrong with me. And I went to the emergency room, like, twice. And they were just like, honey, this is a panic attack. And I was like, no. I was like, it's an allergic reaction. And now you understand. Yeah. And now I'm fully in. Now I see how, like, scary it can get and have so many doctors, like, waiting for me to take care of me and... A therapist. I got a meditation girl. Girl, I got them but all. you have to. You know when you when when you have the means to be able to help yourself. Oh yeah, do it. That's why I, like treat myself is my whole new way of life now. Mm -hmm. Like that's so why my album is called Treat Myself because mm -hmm. that's how I had to like get through it and survive it. And in it, you're like, oh, I'll never get over this. And now on the other side, you're like, oh, oh I figured it out. <laughs> 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 Okay, last but not least. Okay. You are talking about your new song, Genetics. Yeah. Where did that come from? I always, I like every every person in the industry, to me, they just go, yeah, write another bass. Uh, write another All About That Bass song, which is why this album is taking so long, because they're like, nah, it's not as good as bass, you know? And I'll never not hear that for the rest of my life. I mean. So I was like, okay. What's another bass song? What's another I Love My Body because this is what I'm born with? And I was like, genetics is fire. That's a pretty cool way of saying it. And I was like, but I want to spell it like they did like B-A-N, you know, like yes. bananas and Fergalicious. Yes. That was like my everything. I love Fergie. Uh, glamorous, like all that stuff. So I was like, how can I make one of those? And I was like, G-E-N-E-T-I-C-S. I was like, oh. And then I was in the shower like, how you get that bod, bod, uh, is it from God? <laughs> Did you work real hard? No, G-E-N-E-T-I-C-S. Hey. And I was like, oh my God. And I had You wrote that. it in the shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a week, I had that in my head. I was like, I need to get to a studio. And I worked with Justin Taranto, who's a big songwriter, and Mike Sabbath, who's this 21-year-old wizard from New York City. And he's so good. He's a producer, and he's featured on my new song oh, that's coming sick. out called Wave. But you're gonna love it. It's oh, I can't wait! And, and the album's the coming. Singer. Album's coming, man. Megan Finally. Trainer album coming. Three years hey, later, hey, here hey. it comes. Oh my god, I'm so excited! Thank you for being on. So, the last thing that we do on Pretty Big Deal yes. is like a lightning round. Oh yeah. But like fill in the blank lightning round. Uh, okay. One worders. Yeah, one word sentence, whatever you okay. want. Okay. Okay. I pretty much always. Burp. Me too. All the time. Oh, I hate it. Justin I hate hates it. it. I feel like burp. Uh, One sip of water and burping like I had four beers. Okay. What's the biggest lesson you learned in the past year? That's a big one to like just spit out. I know. The biggest lesson I learned in the past year? <sighs> Food can make you feel better. Like if you I mean emotionally, but also <laughs> I was so dumb. But also, if you eat healthier, you, like, don't have stomach aches all the time. I know. I had to cut dairy out. Dude, I can't. Bubble gut. I cut out, like, uh, I'm a pescatarian or whatever now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I need my dairy, so I suck at it. <sighs> oh, it sucks. I know. Okay, Anyways. what's the biggest deal you've ever made? 
like deal, it, like a it contract? It could be deal or like I made a big deal out of that or contract or money uh, or I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I mean Or something a, was a big deal in your life. Oh, man. I suck at these. Um, no, you don't. The big deal. A big deal is um, Daryl, I guess. Daryl. Daryl. Oh, my God. Um, my I husband. just imagine him being a baby. And then them being like, baby Daryl. Baby Daryl. <laughs> Dude, when I mess him, I was like, I hate your name, Daryl. That's your name? I was like, this is my guy, Daryl. Okay, last one. Okay. Because Megan Trainor is a pretty big deal. What is a pretty big deal to you? Whoa, hit me with these deep ones. Hit man. me with your best oh. shot. What's a pretty big deal to me? Um, That sounds so lame. It's okay. Being nice to people. No, that's not lame. It's, it's a not, big deal. It's a big deal, man. I was like at the Today Show and I was saying hi to every person there. And they just kept saying, like one dude was retiring and he pulled me over and was like, I've done this for 11 years. I've worked with every star there is. You are the most humble, the kindest, the nicest, sweetest girl that we like look forward to when you're See? coming in. And I was like, you're going to make me cry. Yeah. But and that's just, what like, it's all about. Going nice gets you such a long way. In life and 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 friendships mm -hmm. and like you learn a lot. I don't know. I, don't I know. like give that. a compliment today. That's my favorite. I love it. Be kind. Thank you, Megan Trainer, for being you. a pretty big deal. Thanks for letting me do this. It's such a big deal. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And make sure to comment on Twitter and Instagram with Megan Trainer. Woo!